Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Akwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere argument, great millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear forbearance and sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among their number, which are the Hebrew Israelite foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that came to me to, uh, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah entitled, You Can't Be Weak When Your Enemies Are Strong. All right. And uh, for those who are new to the truth, the so called uh, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the speckled bird, are indeed the 12 tribes of Israel, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, according to the Heavenly Father. Through his only begotten son the heavenly father's true name being yahweh which means he is he exists all right the ancient of days alashadia mm, and his only begotten son's name is yahweh shah whom the world ignorantly calls jesus christ he's our lord and savior and our mediator and high priest and way back to the heavenly father all right and his name means he is the deliverer he saves he delivers all right and as you can see right here, I got the, uh, the table of nations up. And right here in gold, you see uh, Israel, which would be Yasha Allah in the Paleo Hebrew. All right. Meaning he is a prince of the power. All right. Because the, uh, you know, the Tic Tac hats, you know, Amalek, they'll have you thinking that the, uh, the translation is um, struggle with God or something like that. But no, it's uh, it literally means. It means what I, you know, it means what it says if you can read uh, Lashwan Kadash, the Paleo Hebrew. Yah, He, Shar, Prince, Allah, Power. All right. And that word Allah in the Lashwan Kadash in Hebrew, all right, it's just, it's the, um, the English translation would be uh, God. And that's why so many people um, ignorantly call the Heavenly Father God. But it, as the scripture says, there's God's many and Lord's many. All right. Now, uh, back to the topic of the lesson basically i wanted to get the uh, book of first peter chapter 5 verse 8 and it reads be sober and vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world right so understanding that uh, Satan, he's looking for, he's looking for Hebrew Israelites to devour, all right. And first and foremost, okay, there's, it's the spiritual demon Satan, all right, the top uh, angel on the left hand side, all right, because the heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai controls right hand and left hand, okay. And then, just the same, the same way the heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai has chosen Israel as his chosen people, his chosen nation, all right. The Heavenly Father has given Satan, the spiritual demon, his own chosen nation, and that would be uh, the Edomites, okay? The self-proclaimed so-called white man, who is not white because he's not the color of a cloud, nor is he spiritually pure. He's the red Hebrew Edomite, okay? And that old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of that deceived the whole world. Now, he is also the nation that the spiritual demon Satan uses to fulfill his will, um on the earth and the will of the spiritual demon satan is simply the will of the heavenly father yahweh on the left hand side okay now the point of this epistle is the fact of the matter that whether it be satan or whether it be esau whether it be the spiritual demon satan or whether it be esau esau who does the working of satan satan is looking for israelites to devour and like um and I believe uh, either one of the elders or one of the Akim had made this point recently. Satan is not going to worry about niggas in the... Uh, he's not worrying about niggas in the world. He already got them. Oh, that, that's that's right. It was one of the brothers that made the point. But yeah, one of the brothers through the spirit of probably Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, they made the point that Satan is not looking for these two-third niggas in the world. You know, the, uh, the vast majority of our people, the vast majority of the Hebrew Israelites that won't repent and turn back to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. Whether they be in the world being complete niggas and, you know, and nigger women or whether they be in the truth teaching damnable heresies, which makes them even more wicked. But they're not going to turn back and Satan's not really worried about them. He got them. You know, Satan is going to get he's going to put hell on those that serve 
the, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmiyah Shah, in truth and in sincerity, because he wants to um he wants to test your faith to the verge of overthrow. That uh that Greek word siniazo. All right. Now the next precept that I had that came to me through the Spirit was the book of Sirach, chapter two, verse one, and it reads, and this is important for everybody to know coming into the truth. So uh. The water you how about me outside for putting the spirit on the um the apostles on down for uh, always reminding Akim of this precept. And it reads, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright. And in Hebrew, that word heart is lob, which means your mind. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Alright? And this right here, it's important because, you know, Jake may be of the impression that once you uh, once you enter into what the beloved Elder Apostle Gabar calls this thing of ours, all right, this thing of ours because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, he chose us to uh, give his covenant to his promises, his law, statutes, his commandments, his precepts, his judgments, all right, and the service unto him. No other nation can do that, and we should all be honored that he chose us for this office now that being said that being said there's responsibilities that come with this why because the heavenly father how about me out shy he's not he didn't just give you a um he didn't just give you an, an old uh thunderbird or something like that he didn't give you an old 1967 thunderbird you know he didn't just give you some vintage car he gave you he's given us all the opportunity slot yet <laughs> the opportunity at eternal life okay now as the scripture says all israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation but the scriptures also say all right that the two-thirds essentially they're gonna if they abuse his grace period they're gonna have to learn the same thing the one-third the uh the elect is gonna have to learn but through death by pain the two thirds is going to learn the same thing we got to learn through death by pain. All right. And the thing that all of the entire nation of Israel needs to learn is faith in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah and how to um, how to overcome the flesh as best you can in its, in its captivity through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, whom who uh, shed his blood for us. And he overcame the flesh because he came. He took on the seed of Abraham. All right. Because he had to walk in his flesh and undergo the same temptations we had to go through, you know, having to deal with, uh, you know, hypocrites and devils, you know, amongst the circumcision that was coming at him sideways. All right. Trying to find uh, occasions to accuse him, catch him up in his words, put him to death, all types of stuff. And our Lord, he overcame these afflictions. So on both a spiritual and a physical level. All right. We always have um, we always have a guide on how to overcome these temptations how to be strong in the face of a mighty enemy the same spirit that was on king david you know when he was just david at the time and he went against goliath and he put him down through the spirit and probably how about me out shot that's why king david in, in one of the psalms he said i will not put um faith in my bow and that's it's a uh, that's a heavy spirit to be in and that's that's a high level of faith that um that we all must have i don't want how about me out shot right now, um, Sirach chapter 2, verse 4. And it reads, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take it cheerfully. Salakia. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. All right? And that's uh, this right here. The beauty of this scripture is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he's telling you, all right, not only is he telling you that you're going to have to go through uh, tribulation and uh, you're going to have to be put under pressure to be uh, to be strengthened, he, you know, he's giving you the reason for it, but he's also, you know, letting you know what he thinks about you if you are one of those that in, that is able to endure. He's telling you that for gold is tried in the furnace. An acceptable man in the verse in the uh, furnace of adversity. So, if you want to prove yourself as an acceptable man, as well as the, that piece of gold that the Heavenly Father is referring to, then you gotta strengthen yourself. You gotta set your heart aright, like it says right here in this precept. All right, and this is why I, I believe in one account, 
like one of the brothers brought out, the disciples, they asked, they, um, man, your lawyer, how was I told them something? I think it was about, like, um, I don't remember the exact account. I mean, let me just go ahead and get that. I don't want to write this off. And then I'll, uh, I'll get my point from there. Uh, increase our faith. The Wadi Habash Miao Shah. All right. So, Khan. This is the book of Luke, chapter 17, starting at verse 1, and it reads in the KJV on the left hand side. Then said he unto his disciples, and now this is red letter, so it's Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. And we've already gotten the precepts that the um the little ones are the believers, the, uh, the Hebrew Israelites that repent and turn back to Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, despite whatever walk of life they come from. OK, because you will hear little ones, you might assume uh, children, because there was a, a, a precept where Lord Yahweh Shah basically um, told his disciples to don't for, not forbid the little children to uh, to basically see him and be around him because the, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. But this is referring to uh, spiritually speaking. Any Hebrew Israelite that repents in truth and sincerity and turns back to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. All right. Uh, Khan, and let me get that word offend right here, real quick. Because, you know, it, it really got deeper than what I thought it was when I first read this precept. It really got deeper than what I thought it was when I first read this precept. So we have. Strong's G, 4624, Skandalizo. Scandalizo. Scandalizo. Outline of biblical usage to put a stumbling block or impediment in the way upon which another may trip and fall, metaphorically to offend. Okay? So that's what the word of, uh, that's the use of the word offend right here in Luke chapter 17, verse 2. All right? Now here's, here, here's where it gets interesting. To entice to sin. And why is this dangerous for a Hebrew Israelite? Because the wages of sin is death. Because Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, when he gave us his, uh, his covenant, he put before us that day blessing and curse through his uh, through his servant, Masha, whom the world calls Moses. All right. And we the curses come upon us when we sin, when we break. When, and sin is the transgression of the law, statutes and commandments. And we've all done that, which is why we need one of the many reasons we need Yahweh Shah. And why we're not under the law, but we're under grace because we broke the first covenant. Now, the, the the problem comes in when you have a Jake that, you know, will willingly lay a stumbling block for other Hebrew Israelites. This is why our Lord said that. OK. Now, definition B, to cause a person to begin to distrust and desert one whom they ought to trust and obey. And that's important because when you entice somebody to sin, that's the same thing as enticing uh, them to not trust in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Okay, and there's there's a severe, brutal judgment that comes along with that. Many brutal judgments because the Heavenly Father, He's the King of Terrors. He can He can get you any which way He wants to, and it don't have to make sense. It doesn't it doesn't have to make uh, quote unquote scientific sense. He can get you anywhere, however He feels like it. Now, the other thing that I found interesting, well, a little fun fact. For uh, anybody who may be new to the truth, the way I just went from saying what I said, all right, when I said I explained what a fin has to get into, and I, I explained who the little ones were, then after I explained that, I said to cause a person. I brought, I read this definition to cause a person to begin to distrust and desert one whom he ought to trust and obey, and I and right here I explained. Without having to say Hebrew is light again, I said that has to do with if you teach a person, if you teach somebody to not trust in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. No, because of the context that was given, you automatically know that that somebody would automatically be a Hebrew Israelite of any one of the 12 tribes. And that, at that point, it didn't need further explanation. And the reason why I brought this up is because that's a um, that's a reoccurring precept that. You know, all can find themselves having to go into because you got so many bug outs and weak Christian simps popping up in the common board talking about how uh, 
all nations can be saved. You're preaching hate speech. No, man. The Christian church has been preaching hate speech since its inception because it's a hateful thing to lay a stumbling block. And Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man, he has been running the church for quite some time. And the stumbling block he's been laying is trying to convince the children of Israel that they're Hamites, which are so-called Africans. We were taking the southern kingdom, all right, which would be the, the tribes of Judah, ben, Ju like it, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were taken from the slave coast of West Africa. And right there, that's the only, that's where our whole African everything, that's where all that ends. We were in Africa because we were fleeing Roman persecution, you know, effective 70 AD. But... We are not African. All right. We were sojourning in the land of Ham, just like our forefather Jacob did uh, many, many, uh, many centuries ago. All right. Due to the famine in the land of Canaan. But ultimately, that's all it is. All right. Salvation is only for the nation of Israel, as well as the law, such as the commandments. How about me? I'll shy. He doesn't consider anything. He doesn't consider anything. He doesn't consider the nations anything. They're vanity to him. But let me get back on topic. Um. Uh, to cause to fall away, to be offended in one, i.e. to see in another what I disapprove of and what hinders me from acknowledging his authority. Okay. To cause one to judge unfavorably or unjustly of another, since one who stumbles or whose feet gets entangled feels annoyed. To cause one displeasure at a thing, to make indignant, to be displeased, indignant. And the reason why I like uh, this entry, this is one of my favorite uh, Greek entries in the uh, in the Strong's because every definition right here, it further expounds upon what it means to truly offend while in this truth. OK. And it still ties perfectly into the lesson because you can't have it where Esau, Edom, he, he just Esau, the Edomites, they despise each other. But they put their differences aside to oppress Jake and to make money and to just keep on continuing in wickedness. So how much more should we in righteousness all right. Not let small matters between us and a brother or even big matters uh, prevent us from doing the work or prevent us from being brothers to one another. Unless I unless, you know, said brothers being a complete demon, then there's uh, there's laws and precepts on that as well. But we don't hold grudges. OK, and I'm just speaking in the spirit right now, because the, like I said, the topic of the epistle was you can't afford to be weak when your enemies are strong and having all this extra infighting. That's a form of weakness. OK, like like our Lord says, a house divided cannot stand. And right now, through the spirit of probably how about me, I preaching this gospel through his men, the uh, <laughs> Satan, his house is, divi is dividing as we speak every single day. All right. It's being broken apart. But the church in Israel, we got to stay on point, man, at all given times, <clears throat> because everybody hates us from Esau, Edom, the chief of the uh, the heathen at this point. The other heathen nations, as well as two thirds of our own people. Okay. All we have is Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, this knowledge, this truth, and the sincere Akim Wa Akwathium that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai is dealing with. And none of that's to be taken for granted. Now, Luke chapter 17, verse 3. Read letter of the Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, and it reads in the KJV Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him right and this is what also gets into another uh another statute of our cut of our, of our of our true heritage and statutes you know that word gets into customs all right just like you know in america it's a it's for some reason well I, i'm not going to say for some reason i know why but in america it's a custom to uh, i don't know let's say go to the bar on a saturday night so likewise or in a similar vein it's a custom in israel to rebuke your brother if he's going off you got to let him know where he's going off you can't just talk shit about him behind his back which is nigga culture but that's not our true culture as biblical hebrew israelites all right and also by you rebuking him you're also saving his soul because you how about me out shy he's going to still judge someone's going to get judged for the sin but if you had the, if the Lord put him right there for you to get the opportunity to uh, to rebuke him to save his life and you didn't do it, the Lord's gonna he's gonna basically jack both of you up. Now, if you do, if you have the opportunity in the Lord and you know through the Spirit, the Lord's give you the opportunity to tell him something and you do tell him and he don't listen, well then you know there's laws on that too. I believe it's Matthew chapter eighteen verse six or sixteen. I I get that out of one right to side. Verse four. 
And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And seven being a complete number. Okay? And Yahweh Bash Meow Shah, it's like it. Lord Yahweh Shah, he was telling his disciples this. Okay? So they can understand how to really deal with each other. Because like the beloved elder Demashapat was getting into a while ago, he was getting into how you can't let uh, someone else's low energy or low spirits affect yours because when you do that all right that weighs down an entire room that weighs down an entire atmosphere and someone being in a, in a, a shitty mood you know that can't uh, you can't let that affect you especially as a man of your how about me all shy all right because you never know when your brother may need you one of your argument and truth may need you to be you and when people are upset they're not themselves they're less than themselves they they're, their light is dimmed down for that period of time that they upset about whatever they upset about and you can't let other shit stress you out where it's like all right you, you had a brother's neck for for something that don't got to be that big because at the end of the day we men we understand that you know things may happen you know this is why the scripture says offenses may come but you know there's always um precepts Script, the scriptures are written before time for our learning verse five and the apostle said unto the lord increase our faith all right, and Yahweh Salaki. And the Lord says, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, By and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup. And gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he think that it's like it? Doth he think that serving because he did the things that were commanded him? I throw not. So likewise ye when ye shall have done all these things which I commanded you, say we are un unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. All right, and this is uh I haven't read this this precept in a while, but I definitely like it because uh, the main point of me getting this precept was right here in verse five. And the apostles asked the Lord to increase our faith, because if you're not rooted in the faith, you are not going to have the patience necessary to deal with certain occium. All right. The brothers have made it um, clear on many occasions that, yeah, you know, certain brothers just have different personalities and stuff. And, you know, it may it may not be the personality that you're used to dealing with, but that's part of the growth. That's part of growth when it comes to this truth. You know, just because a brother has a different personality than you doesn't mean he's not in the truth or don't mean he's a demon or none of that other type of stuff. Satan may whisper to you. All right. And it just simply means he has a different personality. And the Lord may want you to uh, experience that so you can grow in some regards because that's iron sharpening iron. OK. You know, you know, like you don't grow always be in your comfort zone you grow by uh just like even in the world people say this to you you grow by uh uh adapting to different situations okay whereas you may not be as um as vocal as other brothers as far as like you know being exuberant or whatever you dealing with a brother that's like that you know it may it may help you reflect on more about yourself that you weren't even really aware of okay now, um, the other aspect I want to get into this precept was when Lord Yahweh Shah said, um, so likewise, when ye have, so like it, so likewise, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants, we have done that which was our duty. And that's also another aspect that needs to be uh, touched upon when it comes to uh, being in, uh, in, in this knowledge and this truth, because it may be times where you may feel offended because you, you know, and I'm speaking... I'm speaking of, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm speaking preemptively through the spirit and power of your howl, me out shy. Okay. Because I don't know any situation that may, have that may have arisen like this as of yet, but it may be times where Jake may feel like, okay, they're not getting recognition and all some type of stuff. And that's the beauty of your howl shy. Because when you think about our Lord and you understand the order of things, you realize he, our Lord needs to be glorified. All right. It's not about us at all. He must increase, we must decrease. Just like uh, it says in the book of, I believe, John chapter 14. But um, 
yeah, we got to understand it's not about that. Sometimes, you know, you just need to get into a spirit where you're just happy being able to do the work of your how about Shmiao Shai. Because look at it like this. We I know we talk about the heathen. We talk about Esau, the two thirds, all this other type of stuff. Mm, Salaki. But never lose track of the fact that there are 17 other nations that would very much, you know, they would very much kill to be in our shoes and they and they could never be in our shoes. Yahweh Bashmi al Shah made them to be our servants and subjects and bondmen and bondwomen. Gave them a little season to rule and see what it's like to be kings and queens or whatever the hell they was on. And then after Lord Yahweh Shah returns, once Lord Yahweh Shah returns and ushers in the kingdom of heaven, then we're going to show them how it was really done. And all we got to do is combat the flesh, combat Satan at every single point. Uh, uh, suffer persecution for Hamashiach's sake As well as a number of other things That the flesh may have you feel like it's impossible But, but when you walk in the spirit You'll see that all things are possible Through Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, And that salvation is literally right there And all we gotta do Okay All we have to do Is be faithful Unto deletion Alright So it was another precept that I had. Um, Con. Just spoke about that a while back. Oh, no. First, I got to get this because I, I, I mentioned it. Proverbs chapter uh, 27. Verse 17. And it reads, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Okay. So... Ultimately, the way we're supposed to do these, uh, the way we're supposed to be in this truth, we're supposed to make it where um, if a brother, if we see a brother has um, what would necessarily, he has a point in the truth where it may not necessarily be a strong suit. I'll say it like that. and But it, it's a strong suit of yours. You help him where you can so he can uh, start to grow in that regard. All right. And he can start to sharpen his uh his spiritual skills in that aspect and he can grow. Likewise, the brother can do the same thing for you. Because, you know, there's some brothers, you know, when you get into the different spiritual offices we have, there's some brothers that's good at prophecy or better at prophecy than others. Some brothers better at uh uh discerning spirits, some brothers better at the Lashuan Kwadash, some brothers better at uh understanding uh interpreting tongues. You know, it's a number of different spiritual gifts that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has given us. So, um, so yeah, the point that I'm making with this is uh, basically never forget this aspect when it comes to the truth. All right, because you can always, like the elders keep saying, you can always do, you can always come to camp, do videos, this and that, be be mean, you know, be real, real, real on point with the scriptures, but. You know, it, it, it's all for naught if the rest of the, you know, the days out of the week, you a nigger. That's a weak unit, man. Like, you know, you got to understand we're in a spiritual war and coming back into our, our true heritage. We got to put off the uh, the nigger spirit. Through the spirit, of, all through the spirit and power of your high boss, Mel Shah. We got to put off the nigger spirit and realize that no matter what goes on with um, what goes on in our personal, whatever, whatever's going on, we can't put off. The brotherhood we can't put off you know doing we can't put off treating our other uh, treating our brothers like we would treat yahweh shah if he was here all right then don't just think about oh yeah if i do this and that i'll get the kingdom no you really need to be in your spirit where you enjoy doing for your brothers because you have to understand that yes we are a family all right no one else on this uh on this on the earth can understand what we're going through and no one else cares because they're complicit in our suffering. No matter what they may say, no matter what they may do, no matter how nice they may seem, that's all because Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah loves us and he's making our enemies to be at peace with us because our ways are pleasing unto him. That's it. It's not because these heathen are oh so nice, it's because Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he still has mercy on us and he's long suffering despite our many transgressions. So the least we can do is, you know, watch out for our brothers. Let me see if I can get the next precept I had. Um, let 
Let me do it this way. I know it's Psalms. Come. The body all by Shah. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 46. And I'm going to start at verse 1 and it reads To the chief musician upon Jana, I guess, Janatha, 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 Lim, Rechokim, Meachtum of David, when the Philistines took him in Gath. Be merciful unto me, O power, for man would swallow me up. He fighting, so like he fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would swallow, so like mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time am I afraid? I will trust in thee. In the most high, I will praise his word. In the most high, I will, so like in the most high, I will put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. When they wait for my soul, shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger, cast down the people, O power. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into the so like into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for the Most High is for me. In the Most High I will praise his word. In Yahweh Bashmi Shah, I will praise his word. In the Most High I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O power. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before the Most High in the light of the living? I'm on. So right here, you know, this is the mentality we got to have because things are going to get real gritty out here. OK, and the flesh is going to be all types of terrified, but you got to walk in the spirit so as not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. OK, so with that being said, we have to also make it where we put more faith in your how about me shot and what man can do, you know, because uh, I forgot which one of the. Yeah, I think one of the beloved brothers from uh, GMS Dallas, he got into it earlier um, when he was getting into the Psalms. Uh, I believe his channel is uh, GMS Psalms for Thought. OK. And he was saying, like, why should we fear these uh these lame ass, you know, these mockers, these scoffers, these heathen, these two thirds when your how about me shot? He made they lame ass. All right. Yahweh Bosh Shah, he loves us enough to give us this understanding so we can, you know, we don't have to fear. When the fear pops up, we can rebuke it in the name of Yahweh Bosh Shah. And we can move forward in strength. We ain't got to worry about what these weak bastards are going to do. They're going to die anyway. All right. And it's not anything we, we rejoice in per se. We more so, like, we, yeah, you can rejoice in it because the scripture says, all right, I believe it's 2 Thessalonians. Is that 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6? And it reads, Seeing it is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not the most high and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Whom shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. All right. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Amon. So knowing that this is the case. Yeah, we, uh, you know, that is secondary that we, you know, we'll rejoice when we, when these two third niggas and these heathen start getting jacked up. And when lawyer Howard shot raises us up as battle axes to, you know, to get busy. I don't want you. How about you? I rock this. I'll be those men. And, uh, yeah, the main, but the main primary, uh, the main primary thing is to rejoice in your how about me? I'll shout to rejoice that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers, actually cares enough and loves us enough to uh, hear our prayers. 
So we're not left here uh, uh, hoping and wondering, is he real? And we don't, he's, he's removing all doubts, man. He's removing all doubts. And he has simple, he has simple commandments that he's given us, man. He, he even simplified the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. He simplified them so Jake wouldn't have any excuse for breaking them like they used to do under the first covenant, which, you know, one way or the other, breaking them is wicked. But, you know, if you are righteous in the eyes of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, you know, he's justifying you through his only begotten son because of your sincere um, desire to do right. All right. Now, that being the case, mm, Salaki, let me see if I can go back here and get the other preset that I had. Um, Oh, that's what it was. The water, how about smell shy? Do a troop. Con. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 29, and it reads, What's the lock? Let me uh, start at uh, verse 27. Psalms, chapter 18, verse 27, and it reads, For thou wilt save the afflicted people. But will bring down high looks, right? So Yahweh Bashem is going to bring, he's going to uh, save his people because we're afflicted, we're the uh, the destitute of this world, so to speak. All right. Now, now that being said, at the same time, he's going to bring down high looks. That includes two thirds of our own people that got a uh, you know an arrogant, proud look because they're making money in Esau's kingdom, the the wicked ass Edomites that's ruling all of this bull crap, as well as the heathen nations joined unto him. All right. Verse 28, for thou will light my candle, Yahweh Bashem El Shah, my power will enlighten my darkness. For I, so I can, for by thee I have run through a troop, and by my power have I, le have, so I, can, have I leaped over a wall. As for the Most High, his way is perfect. The word of Yahweh Bashem El Shah is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. All right? Now, Right here, this is important. This is a really important spirit to have because Esau, he has undivided trust and unbreakable trust in his weaponry, in his uh, his uh, carnal accomplishments. OK, and he's so arrogant and stupid that despite him knowing our, uh, he knows about biblical prophecy, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he's made him the profane one. So he's outside the temple. He's he can't find any place for repentance. It's not in him to get right. So he's going to have full faith in that. And even if he wanted to have faith in Yahweh Bashem El and repent, the Lord's not going to let him. He's going to harden his heart just like he hardened Pharaoh's heart because Esau, he is the uh, the ruler of the modern day spiritual Egypt. OK. Now, on the right hand side, we're supposed to have undivided, unbreakable, unshakable faith in the power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai and that our faith and that our works and our faith on his only begotten son. OK, is going to justify us where he's going to raise up a standard for us in the face of whatever may be thrown our way. doesn't matter if there's a, 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 a EMP attack. All right. Because the beloved elder, Amawan Gabar, he's been getting into a lot of these, uh, these potential, uh, you know, you know, all these different events that Esau may be trying to throw, you know, to make, to start shaking things up, whether it be these, you know, these immigrants coming in, whatever the case may be, no matter if Esau pulls out some Terminator level crap, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he gave that to this damn devil. And the men of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah knows this. So that right there is a strength he can't comprehend. He can't comprehend how we, us knowing all this stuff, we're still boldly proclaiming the namesakes of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, offering about bodies as a living sacrifice. He can't comprehend how, how pissed off he made us with living in a world like this, how much we want this, this, this world to end, which, you know, I'm saying it in the sense of the Greek word aeon, which means earth age. All right. Not, oh, the entire earth is going to be destroyed. Nah, because Esau pushes that dumbass propaganda out to scare people. All right. Because he knows what's coming for him. He's going to be ran out of this world. It's going to not, it's not going to be any more Edomites left after the first 1000 years of the kingdom of heaven. Barak Atah Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. But the word of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah uh, it's tried. He's a buckler to those that are that, uh, so like he's a buckler to those that trust in him. And a buckler is a fancy word for a shield. So yes, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he is a shield for those that put their trust in him, man. You can't have trust in Esau's weaponry and then have trust in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. It don't work that way. And yeah, we understand some brothers are gonna be martyred for the namesakes of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, but you know that's 
once you get into the spirit, you know, this is why you pray that the Lord increase your faith. Like I got from the book of uh, Luke, the 17th chapter, just like the apostles did. OK, why is this? Because it's easy to say these things and then you'll change when, you know, shit hits the fan if you're not rooted. But you how about me? I'll shout the same way he put the spirit on brothers to do this work when they never thought that it was even in, in the cars for them. The same way he can put the spirit on you to be to overcome when you um, when you brought to that lower state or when you try it in the front of adversity. All right. But yeah, man, like the, moving in the spirit, you know, it may seem like it, it may seem terrifying because you don't even fully comprehend it all. But all you need to know is your how about me? I'll shout got you and reading these scriptures that helps you get that comfort more and more and that's what the Rakhakwadash one of the main things the Rakhakwadash is all about is that Holy Spirit and that comforter that allows you to not only understand the scriptures but um draw comfort from reading them. A comfort that the world doesn't have. Esau can talk all the bullshit he wants. You can see the proud look on two thirds of Jake's face, proud look on the heathen face, but niggas are miserable. All right. The love of many is wax and cold. People really don't know what the hell's about to happen next. People have to delude themselves into believing that uh, Babylon the Great, the U.S. of A. is going to win uh, World War Three because they they never known anything else other than Babylon. But the men of the Lord, you know, f faith is so powerful. It has the men of the Lord out here, you know, offering their bodies as a living sacrifice, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more than ever. Like the beloved Elder Malcolm always says, despite the fact that we've never seen the kingdom of heaven, but through faith we know it's coming. We're willing to, on the we're willing to risk. These lives we have here in Babylon, the great, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jake, this moving in the flesh may be like, look, boy, you about to you about to lose everything on account of this, such and such and such and such, this faith system. Nigga, yes, because Yahweh Shai did not have to call any of us. Yahweh Bosh Shai did not have to call any of us into this truth. So the least we can do is make the best of it and glorify his name. We found out we not just a bunch of niggas, spiggers, and savages. We found out that the that the, uh, the so-called white man who's acting like he's God on earth is really the damn devil. And that the Lord, Yahweh Bosh, Shai has loved us this, this entire time. And the only reason we've been in slavery is because we went off. We sinned against Yahweh Bosh, Meow Shai. We broke the rules and he told us this is the consequences. That's fair. That Yahweh Bosh, Meow Shai judges righteous. In all of his ways, he judges righteous. So we really have nothing to be upset about. We can't be upset at Yahweh Bashmir Shah. And, and, and even if we, even if you try to, Yahweh Bashmir Shah, he told you to be upset, who to be upset with. First and foremost, yourself for going off. And second, Esau Edom. And rejoice. If you really want to be upset, rejoice in the fact that this motherfucker, this, this, this bastard who's ruining the earth, got your women out of order, got you as uh, looking like less than a man, and has everybody against you. You can't even enjoy enjoy this creation that was made for you. Enjoy the fact that you'll have his ass in derision. He'll, he's going to be in fucking slavery in the kingdom of heaven. And Yahweh Bashem Shah has let you know that it is righteous. Slavery is righteous. The way Esau did it was wicked. The scriptures let you know he's forwarded the affliction. And I'm bringing this up because also this has to do with strength. Another aspect of being strong is not letting your enemy shake you. Because a, a Jake that's not rooted will be talking one minute, oh, yeah, yeah, Kwame Asherala, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, the heathen can be saved because you you started to let Satan whisper to you. And now you're talking about some, it's wrong to enslave people. It makes us just as weak as our enemy. N it makes us just as evil as our Like, nigga, shut up. Yeah, how about Shmuel Shah says otherwise? And this is why it's not your job to think. Let me get that precept right here. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, and it reads, Trust in your Bosh Me Shah with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear your Bosh Me Shah and depart from evil. And it's real evil to try to tell your brothers that it's it's evil. You trying to you trying to reverse psychology of them and tell them that they are coons for identifying the devil as the damn devil. Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man is the devil. All it means is deceiver. Don't get all damn superstitious because of the cartoons Esau put out. Proving more and more, the, the book of Job chapter 9, verse 24, the earth is given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? No other nation had, no other nation fits to build up iconoclasm. Now, if, a, if an ancient nation goes to war and knock down some statues, that's one thing. That's part of war. Defeat, if you defeat a nation's God, you basically, you crush their morale. 
But when you when you uh, start defacing uh, their images, you leaving them alive, but you painting them like that was always you. That's a fate worse than death. That's why we got a bunch of bugged out Jake still talking about some damn Jeebus cross. Some damn Allah. All this other bullshit. But yeah, it's evil to do these type of things, man. When you lean to your understanding, you start talking all types of bullshit. You get in that bleeding heart Christianity Babylon wine. That makes no sense. Not realizing that Esau would love for you to go that route because in his brain, that means he's escaping judgment. That's what Jake's got to realize, man. You're not, you're not doing any good by letting the wicked get off scot-free. This is not one of them weird-ass movies he releases where you got some damn demon, demonic-ass antagonist. Then all of a sudden, five seasons into the show, he turns over a new leaf, and now he's a quote-unquote anti-hero. Then, then the next season, he's a good guy. And then all the fucking bullcrap he did five seasons ago, it, it, it's, it's, all, it's all under the rug. No. That would only apply to an Israelite that was wicked and truly repentant in meekness and sincerity. But even then, it's only but so much Yahweh Bashem El Shai has uh, Jake do in wickedness. Esau literally does not want to repent, and Jake is trying to force the nigga to repent. Get rooted, Jake. Let me get this precept, but I'm going to wrap it up. Come on. The water Yahweh Bashem El Shai. This is the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 3 and it reads, For what if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High, Yahweh Bashmi Shah without effect? Verse 4, here's the point. The Most High forbid, yea, let the Most High, Yahweh Bashmi Shah be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. All right? And that's real important to understand because... If you are, if you call yourself serving Yahweh Bash Miel Shah, you have to put away this, this, this uh, strong delusion of free will. Everybody's will is preordained by Yahweh Bash Miel Shah, including the wicked. No matter how powerful it may seem to you, he's not, he's less than nothing to Yahweh Bash Miel Shah. So how much more? How much? So he could easily be nothing to you if you follow Yahweh Bash Miel Shah and put your trust in him. And this is also an aspect of being strong. You know, you can't be weak when your enemies are strong because the strength comes with having unshakable an unshakable belief in what you have to do. You got an unshakable belief in your power. Yahweh Bash Me Shah. Esau can't buy you. He can't uh, uh, dissuade you. He can't sift you. Going back to that Greek word, Siniazo. All right. And he can't do anything to get you off the path to eternal life if you just put your faith in your Yahweh El Shai and listen to our Lord for once and realize he's telling you who your enemy is. He's always told you. And for the final time, he's telling you, avoid him or face the same judgment as him. If you want to be joined unto him, you're going to face the same judgment. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be to say brutal is it don't it don't fully encapsulate how bad it's going to be. You don't want to drink of Esau's cup. So pray to Yahweh Bash Me Al Shai. He gives you the strength to endure. Because you'd rather look, <laughs> I don't want Yahweh Bash Me Al Shai to I'm of the elect number. I would rather, you know, Yahweh Bash Me Al Shai put that strong spirit on me to endure whatever the um, persecution, having to be a pilgrim on the earth, whatever the case may be, guillotine. Tribulation 10 days by being having the devil toss me into prison. All of these things. Being put to death for righteousness sake that, for the name of Yahweh Bashmi Shah. All of these things, I don't want Yahweh Bashmi Shah right to die. I'd rather do than face Esau's judgment. I'm not about to eat a missile because I was a punk that wanted to save the heathen at the last minute. This is why every single day you have to understand it's not a given that you're called into this thing. If it was a given, there would be no two thirds. It wouldn't be a portion of two thirds that join the truth and fall out and another portion of two thirds that never join the truth. No. If this was a given, that would never be the case. But it is the case that we have two thirds that call themselves Israelites and we have two thirds that don't want nothing to do with it. that never heard of it or they have heard of it, but they just put, they cast it behind them. So be strong. You got strong enemies. You be strong. You be stronger through the spirit and power of your how about me? I'll shy. His weapon is carnality. 
Yours is spirituality, true spirituality and faith in your high Bosh Mial Shah, which is above all of these carnal blessings. And the Lord's going to show that very soon in Jacob's trouble and especially in the day of the Lord when he sends his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, back to destroy this wicked ass queendom. And anybody who takes that haragma, you are going to be in that lake of fire right along with the rest of the wicked. And the elect of the nation of Israel will be in the chariots watching you burn. I don't want your how boss me on shot rot to we have that elect number. But that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechaha Kwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing a sincere citation as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yah Sharala and Ababa Ball. We almost out of here. Adawan Rataza and we got next Adawan Rataza. Shema Yasha Allah Yahawa Allah Hayanawa Yahawa Achad. Shalom.